Um, yeah, just before I begin, uh, sorry if the camera goes up and down, up and down and all that. I uh, hope it doesn't really uh, pretty much bother the video. Um, I don't have that much money to afford to buy myself a new camera. I, I have one right here behind me and all that. But I still regret to this day buying that camera because it can only record like 25 minute videos. And there's not a screen that you can look at yourself. And I, I want cameras like that, so... Anyways, uh, just before I begin, um, I actually bought the complete series of the Flintstones. I, I do have it on DVD, but I am going to keep the DVD set, but yeah, it's, uh, it's an amazing show, a must have. So anyways, uh, let's begin with the first, uh, item, uh, the first thing of, uh, I don't know how many videos I, I will be making, uh, on this. Um, probably several videos because I have a big, big freaking, uh, Blu-ray collection. You see right here, uh, all these, uh, that's not even, there's one shelf behind, on the, the side there, and there's two shelves here. I have one shelf of horror movies, and one that I did years ago, I think a year or two ago, my Arrow, my uh, Screen Factories, um, and the Vinegar Syndrome. So, yeah, uh, probably will redo it at some point. But for now, I just want to do the just the regular Blu-rays. I have close to a thousand plus Blu-rays. So, um, I don't know if you can see it uh, right there. That's my uh, DVD horror films. I had them way at the end. Um, closer to windows and all that, but I, I decided I was sick and tired. If I want to watch a good horror movie and all that, uh, I, I want to reach for it and, all, and such. Uh, now it's pretty much my, uh, wrestling collection on DVD. That's there. Uh, at some point I will be doing a video about that. So anyways, um, <laughs> enough of me with the intro and all that at the beginning. Um, uh, the first, the first thing, um, is my second favorite ending to a WrestleMania. My, my first one, and I, I don't care what a lot of people say, Gr Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit hugging both of them in the middle of the ring at WrestleMania 20 at, in 2004. Quite possibly one of my favorite moments ever. Uh, my, my favorite ending to a WrestleMania. Uh, for the sole reason that I actually watched these guys in WCW and never saw them in ECW because I, I didn't have ECW. I, didn't, I think it was originally on the Sunshine Network, something like that, in the Philly. Uh, I don't know if everybody in the States uh, saw um, saw ECW, but here in Canada, pretty much, I think my introduction to ECW was on uh, TNN. So, yeah. Uh, really awesome main event and just really um, lo love loved it. So, yeah. Uh, and my second favorite one has to be uh, Brian Danielson or AKA Daniel Bryan, all that. Um, winning the title for the first time in WWE. Uh, just really a magical night that to me, I'll never forget. And yeah, just I actually do hope I'm praying that he goes back to the Indies. Not all elite wrestling, not Impact, but the Indies and all that. Just wrestle a couple matches here and there once in a while, and just really show that he's still the Brian Danielson uh, that he he was several years ago. Because man, him and Samoa Joe, him and AJ Styles, him and um. I don't know if he ever had any matches with uh, the American Dragon. Uh, not the American Dragon. Uh, yeah, he used to be called the American Dragon. But uh, the Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels. I'm pretty sure he had matches with him. But quite possibly one of the most underrated wrestler uh, to ever step in the in the ring. Um, WWE Legends. Pretty much a lot of... Uh, a lot of um, superstars or wrestlers 
uh, wrestlers, I should say, that later on would become major legends uh, in WWE. Um, the criminally underrated, um, pretty much a lot of a lot of what happened in his life was his, his own fault. But drugs and alcohol and everything, Jake the Snake Roberts, one of the most brilliant psych, uh, psychologists in the ring ever. Uh, amazing promo person. Um, junkyard dog. Um, again, drugs, drugs and alcohol and all sorts of things destroyed his career. Uh, million dollar man, just pretty much um, had to become a minister and all that because. When he finished wrestling, he was, he was, um, I think he was addicted to uh, some sort of drugs and all that. And he had to uh, just really, really kick out of it. And back, back in the day, man, it was really, really hard in the wrestling business to make it. You have to make it, but you, you wrestle 300, 325 days a year. You probably had like, if you had five days a year, five days a year off, you were lucky. Uh, back in the 80s, man, holy freaking hell. Um, okay, NXT. Um, yeah, I don't know if a lot of you people can see it. But yeah, NXT, greatest matches. Um, Sasha Banks. Um, Charlotte, to me, is one of the most uh, overrated wrestler. Uh, in my opinion, um, Bailey and uh, Page Pages was amazing. Uh, AJ Lee, just really shame she never, um, she she didn't come into WWE. Excuse me, she didn't come into WWE at the right time uh, because she had so much um, charisma, so much. Uh, I don't know what to say about her, but she, she was really amazing. Paige and her, and um, back in the back in the day, you had uh, Trish Stratus, you had Lita, you had um, man, you had Jazz, you had um, in the mid two thousands, uh, mid I think was it mid two thousands or early two thousand tens or something like that. Mickey James came into the WWE. Uh, obsessed with uh, Trish Stratus and such, um, yeah, just really, it's it's really a shame for her what the WWE did, but yeah, uh, with the, the garbage bag and everything, just pretty much it, it shows you, it really shows you what the WWE, what these people that run this company will do to you. To to them, you're just a number. You, they really don't care about you. They really do not give a damn about you. They want to make as much money as they can possible with you. And when they don't need you, they throw you out in the garbage. So it's just like every wrestling business, every wrestling company has done this. So uh, not, not, not just McMahon, pretty much everybody's done this and they're still doing it. There's, there's a lot of uh, shady promoters out there. So uh clash of champions. Um, amazing. Amazing shows. I don't think I've seen a lot of them. But yeah. I wish I would have watched them back in the day on TBS. Oh uh, no. This, I, this. <laughs> okay. Um, ECW. Uh, do I have? Uh, I thought I had it in here. I think I showed it. But uh, anyways, I have the... Uh, the first two volumes. I don't know if they ever released a third volume of this, but uh, amazing, uh, amazing stuff. A lot of uh, a lot of uh, matches that they never released on uh, WWE uh, home video and all that. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff from WWE uh, that I, I want to get on um, on Blu-ray. For the sole reason why I want to get it on Blu-ray is. Because they include special features in this. So. Uh, the second release of the N uh, NWO. So, yeah. 
I, I don't own the original release that they did uh, years prior, a couple years uh, when Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, and uh, Hogan came back and all that to, ah, damn it, okay, came back to uh, WWE. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, the bottom line on the most popular superstar of all time. So, uh, the mostly documentary and talking about a lot of his matches, and you have a lot of his amazing matches in this. So, now we're gonna go to just movies itself. Um, Babe and uh, Babe. Pig in the City. Um, th this one I, I like a lot because it's imaginative, and compared to the first one, it's uh, it's something different. It's not a remake of this like a lot of people do a lot of times. Um, but yeah, it's it's really a shame there's no there's no special features in this. Um, but there are special features in in this one. But yeah. Probably if I just put this here, would be a lot less of a headache. Okay. D. The original trilogy of uh, the boys. Um, the boys won. Um, pretty much gonna really only talk about the first movie. It's about Stan and all that, and he, uh, owes money to a loan shark, one of his best friends, and one of his best friends is about to break his leg and all that. I would say, I should say both of his legs, uh, and he pretty much loses consciousness. Um, his best friend just, I'll make a deal with you and all that. I'll just... I'll just play uh, with my hockey team against you, with your hockey team and all that. If I win, I get your bar. I get everything. So, yeah, uh, pretty much uh, every so often they play uh, just, just random games here and there. They're really horrible. So, yeah, they're pretty much a joke in the league and everything. So, um, you really don't take anything serious. And... Yeah, um, it, it's an amazing film. The atmosphere, the characters, the music. Um, it's it's a must, must. If you do understand French and all that, I would highly recommend uh, the films. But I, I do think that there is an English version of the uh, of this uh, film. Because... Ooh, okay... No, this one doesn't include the English one. No, I thought it did. But I, I do know that they do include... Uh, there's somewheres that you can get the English version of this film. So, uh, highly recommend um, that... Certainly the original trilogy. The Fort one, all that, is horrible. I, I just really... I actually ordered the, the Fort movie on pay-per-view and I hated it. Um, yeah. Uh, Jacob's Ladder, the next one, highly recommend to anybody out there. I've never seen it. Uh, it's a trippy film. It's about a, a veteran that comes back and just has terrible nightmares and horrible things that happen to him and everything. And just really, wow. I, I was stunned. I just really want to rewatch it again. And uh, just really surprises me that this movie right here, Jacob's Ladder, is not higher on IMDb um, because man, you, you don't see stuff like this anymore. Um, the original X Men, pretty much what launched the entire franchise. So, um, X Two, X Men United. And what pretty much killed the franchise for a little while. And to this day, to this day, to this very day, they will not hire people that care about 
the source material. Brian, I think the original director of those the first two movies, I think it was Brian Singer. Brian Singer, I think. Yeah, yeah, Br Brian Singer. Was he the... No, no. The third one, he, he wasn't the um, the director of this, and it just really shows. Um, certainly in this one and the new one they did, the Dark Phoenix. In Hollywood, they don't understand a lot of stuff, and they don't really give a damn. Because the Dark Phoenix, you need to at least a couple movies. Yeah, you need to at least um, pretty much just... And the movie, a certain movie and all that, that the Dark Phoenix comes and everything. And then, I, I don't know, the the Dark Phoenix, uh, probably just the, the Phoenix itself, later on would become the Dark Phoenix. And the whole story uh, would um, revolve around it. And just pretty much, I'm not saying follow the entire story itself, but at least have elements of the story. At least have it make it sense. But in Hollywood today, nothing makes sense. So, yeah. Um, this one, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, X-Men First Class. Uh, Days of Future Past. Awesome, awesome sequel to, to this one right here. To... Uh, First class. So, yeah. The four uh, films of Ip Man. For a lot of you people out there that don't know who Ip Man is, he's, um, he's a guy that trained Bruce Lee. He's, um, he, he's pretty much a master in Kung, I think Kung Fu. Uh, Kung Fu... Yeah, martial arts. And I, I don't know if it's kung fu or some sort of martial arts thing and everything, but uh, yeah, he's he's pretty much famous um, training uh, Bruce Lee. So really loved the original trilogy. The fourth one was awesome, but uh, loved the original trilogy. Kick ass one and two. This is pretty much how you do um, a comic book. You just really you you don't you do you do not sugarcoat. Excuse me, you do not sugarcoat shit. You do pretty much. You don't follow the entire. I'm not like I said. You're not you don't you don't have to follow the entire comic, but at least bring perspective, bring a little element to. The, the comic book itself, but uh, yeah, Kick Ass Two. I don't, I, I don't think they ever made a third one. I, I don't know if they're ever gonna make a third one. So, um, Guardians of the Galaxy One and Two. The one thing I, I wish uh, studios would do, I would be willing to pay. Fifty, sixty dollars to have the ultimate uh, release of a movie. Have the soundtrack. Have amazing special features. Pretty much have everything. Um, the the more the most deluxe edition you can have, either in steelbook form or just um, I don't know. Studios could do like uh, Criterion style um, releases and all that. Have different tier probably just to keep case one and then have the blu-ray have the 4k and then you have the steel book and then you have the uh ultra deluxe that includes a soundtrack includes special features that are not included with the blu-ray 4k um i i don't know so something i just really would like that because i love it when a lot of companies uh release the soundtrack. I know it costs a lot of money. Like I said, I would be willing to pay $50, $60 for the soundtrack and some goodies and all that. 
when when you're willing to pay money uh, to have the ultimate edition of a certain film you really like, Ninja Turtles. <laughs> no, uh, no, but Ninja Turtles, the original 1990 film. Um, I would be willing if I had if I had a lot of money. I, I, I would like to buy the rights to the film um, and just pretty much release my own edition, buy the rights to the music, and just pretty much uh, probably include a little comic book and all that of the original first issue, 1984 uh, TMNT um, comic, and just, I don't know, add pretty much try to find the rights uh, for the, um, I think, it was, was it? Ger yeah, German edition of uh, TMNT buy the rights to that and port it to port it to uh, the US version because I, I don't know to this day I still don't understand why the film for like close to 9 years 9 fucking years a truly independent film was on top and then yeah, it's like a lot of studios do not care about old films. They just want to make money with new, as much money as they can with crap and everything. So, but anyways, uh, enough of my opinion. Uh, the next one is Fighting With My Family. Uh, awesome uh, page documentary. Uh, well, it's a, it's a film, but it's mostly documenting her, her life and everything and how she fell in love with the wrestling business. Her parents were wrestlers in, uh, I think, the UK. Uh, something like that. But uh, her father and uh, mother were wrestlers and all that. So she decided she was going to become a wrestler. And it's just really a shame for Paige, uh, which I I don't remember her name, but it's really hard to pronounce. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I think it's Perg. Was it Perg? I think her, her family name is Perg. I, 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 I don't remember. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Next one right here is a gem. Uh, for a lot of you people out there who have never seen this film, um, it's a gem. I'm not really that big of a John C. Riley fan. Uh, John C. Riley fan. Um, I'm not really big of a fan of John C. Riley, but I, I I love them in in this amazing film, and it was I think it was limited uh, or a limited release. Um, it wasn't released everywhere. The untold story of the world's greatest comedy team, and this is really when you have. A person that cares about what they're doing. Uh, either the director, the writer, screen uh, play, uh, or the music man, or uh, the art director, or wh whatsoever. The actors. When when you have the passion to make movies, th this is what you get. This is what you get. So, yeah. Um, okay. Logan. Uh, Logan is pretty much about Wolverine dying, loses his power and everything. Uh, yeah, just really years and years. I, I don't remember how many years later that, uh, yeah, really, I really enjoyed this one. I'm going to have to watch at some point Logan Noir. So I haven't watched it yet. The, this one, I just really, I despised it. A lot of people liked it, but I, I just really could not. Uh, get into the story probably at some point if I rewatch it, uh, probably will like it. But I'm I'm gonna keep this film. But yeah. <sighs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. The girl with the dragon tattoo. Uh, the girl who played with fire, the original trilogy, and the girl who kicked the hornet's nest, uh, based off the three books and all that. 
they only released, uh, they only did, um, awesome, awesome film. Uh, Mar, uh, Rooney, yeah, Rooney Mara. So, what is it? Hen in the snow comes forth in the thaw. Oh, so, um, David Fincher, you really cannot go wrong with David Fincher. So, yeah. Um, Matilda. Really, really enjoy this one. Uh, it's pretty much about a young girl called uh, Matilda and all that. She has a special gift. Um, pretty much both her parents really do not give a damn about her. Uh, she's just pretty much, uh, since she was alive, she took care of herself. Made herself reckless. Uh, went to the library. Tried to learn everything. And just pretty much, yeah. Uh, one day she meets um, a teacher that would change her life and all that. Miss Honey. Um, and that, and that school pretty much has a principal that is hor horrendous, that hates children, that pretty much tortures them and everything. Um, yeah, it's, it's an awesome, awesome little, uh, uh, cult classic film. Uh, Mara Wilson, I, I do remember a couple, a couple videos. I probably one of my most fun ones that I do remember was a nostalgia critic and all that. I she did a couple videos with him. Uh, just really pretty pretty good videos. Um uh reviews. I think of a lot of it were films and all that, so um <laughs> talking about Ninja Turtles and all that. Um the original trilogy um of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one, two and three um, it's really a shame that Steve Barron didn't come back for a second one. But the first two ones, I'll be honest, they're really good. Third one, I don't know what the heck they were thinking. Um, to me, honestly, you had so many villains. You had, um, Baxter Stockman. You had, man, you could have used Crane in a third one. B-Bomb Rocksteady. You, you could have used all sorts of different characters. Uh, the Ninja Turtles, man, back... Even back then, had so many different characters. Uh, you could have used some from like Krang and Bebop and Rhapsody from the cartoon and all that. Um, I, I don't know. You could have used Mondo Gecko. You could, I, I think he was originally in the comics, but yeah. Mondo Gecko. You could have used all sorts of different characters. But yeah, I don't know why they went the way they went and all that, but. Uh. No Country for All Men. Old Man. Old men, I should say not old man. <laughs> old men. Uh, the Legend of Billie Jean. <laughs> man. The theme for this, I, I, I listen to uh, Pat Benatar, Invincible, a lot of times. And I just, I'm just obsessed with the song. Certainly the video, Pat Benatar herself hated, hated uh, the, the movie being uh, a part of this. A part of uh, Invincible. So, yeah. It's a shame that... Um, it's a shame that they didn't include the music video in this. It would have been fun. Um, the Godfather. The Complete Restoration. I, I don't know if they ever released... Uh, I think they released a... A trilogy on uh, Blu-ray, on uh, Blu-ray, yeah, on 4K. I, I'm not, I'm not really sure if they released the, the 4K edition yet. Uh, Shakes the Clown, uh, really an awesome Bobcat Goldwit uh, film uh, about an alcoholic clown, all that. That is, um, that is um, framed for murder and everything, and he has to, um. Proven his innocence and everything. So, uh, really good, really good film. Um, not not for kids, but yeah, it's just really a classic film that I'm pretty sure a lot of you people out there have never seen. I would highly recommend it. Go online and probably go um, even on YouTube. I'm pretty sure there's probably some um, some trailers or something like that or. Probably Tubi. Tubi probably Tubi has it. I, I'm not really sure right now, but probably Tubi has it. And uh, just pop it out, 
pop it out. Yeah, just pop pop it in your um, your cell phone or your computer or what whatsoever. I don't know what the hell I'm t I'm talking about. I'm, I'm just really talking about gibberish and all that. So um, this is a sequel of the awesome first uh, Bun Cap Bun Cop Bad Cop. Pretty decent uh, sequel. Copland, uh, really awesome uh, Sylvester Stallone film. Um, yeah. Escape Plan, another Sylvester Stallone film with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think they made like three films, uh, three of them. I I didn't see the other ones. I, I heard they were pretty bad. So. Um. Spider-Man Far From Home. I actually heard that this uh, this edition right here is pretty bad. Uh, I, I don't know how bad it is, but yeah, I just really love this film. It's, uh, it's so cheesy. Rikio... Um, the story of Ricky. Uh, just pretty much Ricky goes to prison and all that. And has to fight different bosses in prison. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a really, really awesome film. Another Stallone film. Amazing. And I never really knew how... And to this day, I still don't know how to use the three shell system. But yeah, a cop that pretty much gets frozen for years, um, trying to stop uh, Simon. What was it? Simon Phoenix. Yeah, Simon Phoenix. Uh, so they're frozen for years and all that, I think decades. And then they're on thawed and everything, and it's up to. Uh, Sylvester Stallone's uh, character uh, to catch him. So, pretty much a lot of uh, mayhem and reckoning and everything. Probably one of my favorite um, favorite films in my collection because of what what a person does with a comic book character. And just pretty much puts love into it and all that. I think it was in Wolverine. Or probably... I think it was Wolverine. That they really screwed up Deadpool. And Ryan Reynolds just really wanted to do something good with the film. Um, and he's just pretty much... its He's, he's a wisecrack uh, douche. <laughs> it's pretty much what... Uh, it's pretty much what Deadpool is. He's he's immortal, so you can chop his head off. You can try to uh, flambe him, but he's never gonna die. So, um, Deadpool two, good little, decent little uh, sequel. Nothing, uh, nothing compared to the original one. Uh, okay, this is the. Pretty much what started the MCU. If it wasn't for Blade, uh, you probably wouldn't see the MCU universe. Back in the late 80s, beginning of the 90s and all that, uh, Marvel, uh, I think they were uh, in really bad shape. I don't know. I think the... He sold the rights to certain films and all that, like Captain America, or probably them. I don't remember if it was them that did them, uh, did those films or what. But I think it's '89, The Punisher. You had in uh, the early '90s, uh, Captain America, and an unreleased uh, to this day, never released on uh, any format, uh, the Fantastic Four film, which I wish that they would release just as a special feature and all that. Or a special disc or whatsoever. So it, it would actually be fun to, to just really get uh, the original F uh, Fantastic Four film. 
to this day, they've never been able to do a good Fantastic Four film. Just like I said in the beginning of the, uh, the um, video, is you have to bring in people that care about the source material, that read the comics, that understand what the fuck they're doing. Either directing, writing, producing, acting. So, when you have none, none of it, you get, um, let's say, you have the Fantastic Four films. So, amazing flick, uh, National Lampoon's Vacation. Just really, just really shame that Dan Ack and not Dan Aykroyd, John Belushi is not with us anymore. Um, been watching a whole bunch of my uh, SNL DVDs, and probably one of my at least, at least my top five favorite films of all time. And just really forget uh, the sequel that he did, uh, Blues Brothers Two Thousand, uh, the original Blues Brothers. Uh, just amazing film from beginning to end. Not really that big of um, of a uh, rap fan and all that. I do listen to rap once in a while, but I I, just, I really loved uh, Eight Mile, so a story of uh, Marshall Matters and everything, or the, the loosely based story of uh, Marshall Matters. Uh, Brittany Murphy, aka the voice of um, Lu uh, Luann Platter in uh, King of the Hill, um, the amazing King Basinger. So, uh, Ninja Assassin. I'm gonna have to rewatch this film. I, I loved it. Can't really remember what it was, but what the movie was about. Um, this one I, I loved because I remember growing up with the series. I think I was 93, 94, 10, 11, something like that, uh, when it first started. Um, I do have the complete series of the original uh, Power Rangers, so. Oh, oh, this is the Walmart limited edition artwork plus character postcards. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Uh, Cobra. Um, Cobra was supposed to be Something else. What was the movie? I don't remember. Uh, I don't. Re I, I saw it a little while back, but uh, this was um, an amazing film. Uh, love this uh, cheesy type film. Just really shame that they don't make films like this anymore. Cheesy, bad, cheesy movies. So they're bad, but they're so good. Uh, Ed O'Neill, it's just really a shame that this guy has never made many, many movies. Uh, but Dutch, Dutch, I love him. And Al Bundy, man. Uh, one of my favorite dads. Uh, probably had, uh, my favorite dad had to be um, Red Foreman. Um, yeah, Red Foreman, um, Al Bundy. And my other third one has to be probably Homer Simpson. So, um, Parenthood. Amazing film. <laughs> I know I, I say I, I say amazing film a lot, but yeah. Um, this one, I'm, I'm waiting uh, for this film to be released on, on Criterion. Um, because I, I just love it. I love the visual, the style of the film and everything. I, I just enjoyed it. Whew. Already 39 minutes. Okay. Um, yeah, this is Project X. Not the one where uh, the, the kids uh, throw a party. I, I don't even know in the film. I've never seen it. But yeah, this is the monkey movie. So... Uh, Dogma. I didn't even remember I had this one. <laughs> it was to a point you have so so much a big collection and all that, and you don't remember what you have. 
Um, yeah, Dogma. Super Troopers. I do have the sequel. I don't remember where it is. Not as good as the original one. Um, funny as hell from beginning to end. Another funny film. Again, I'm not really that big of a Will Ferrell fan. I, I do love a couple of his early early films. Uh, Anchorman. Never watched the sequel. Uh, I do own it, but I've never watched it before. So, uh, Anchorman 2. I don't know if it's any good, but yeah. <laughs> Transpotting. This one right here, uh, not a lot of people talk about it, but I, I truly enjoy it for what it is. Uh, Cronenberg, David Cronenberg, man, amazing filmmaker. And you really have to understand this film to like it. Uh, or if if you like it, but you don't understand it, uh, just like me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's um, Robert Pattinson does an amazing job of this, so. Um, Chaplin. The biography of uh, Charles Chaplin. Amelie. Thirteen Assassins. Another amazing Takeshi Meek uh, film. I, I wish that... I, I wish where I live, I, I had a lot more movies like, like this. Because I freaking love movies like this. Um, ninja films or uh, samurai films. Stuff like that. Now, I remember when I was a kid, my neighbor um, had VHS. It was straight out ninja films. Um, I think it was like films that you, nobody really talks about. Just really random ninja films. I, Yeah. Uh, Adventures in uh, Babysitting, 25th Anniversary. A History of Violence. Bad Boys 1 and 2. And you have to bring uh, Bad Boys for Life. Uh, awesome, uh, awesome, amazing uh, action um, co action comedy films. Um, Martin Lawrence and Will Smith really click well in these films. Uh, really loved um, the third installment years ago. When was the second one made? Uh... Doesn't really say. Dang it. Don't remember when. I think it was the early 2000s. Doesn't really say. Damn it. Uh, Damn it. 2003. Wow. Um, and this was released in 2020. So close to... Uh, cl close to 20 years. Like 16, 17 years later. Um, yeah. He really did, did an awesome job. Not as good as the first two. But pretty, pretty amazing. And a lot of times... Uh, movies like this. That they released... Movies 15, 20 years later, they're, they're not as good. But the story itself is, is, is pretty awesome. So I... It's been so long since, since I've seen the, the first two. I'm going to have to pop it in. Pop uh, those movies in at, at some point because... Yeah. Uh, Total Recall. A call classic film. Um, Blu-ray exclusive interview with director Paul uh, Vor... Uh, Vor... Verhoeven uh, Restoration Comparison the original director of Robocop did this one so 
I, I love Michael Keaton. Love them in uh, the Ray Kroc biography. So, how he became uh, the owner of McDonald's and everything and and such. Just really, really uh, not 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 the greatest film ever made, but pretty uh, pretty good film. Okay, I think I showed the yeah. I'm gonna have to put that one on on top. Uh, the Never Ending Story, the original one. Again, the theme for this, the Never Ending Story. Um, that theme is, is such an amazing, amazing film, uh, amazing theme, I should say. But yeah. Boys in the Hood. There's one film that I wish did. I don't know if they ever released it on Blu-ray. Is um, I know I talk about that film a lot. Excuse me, that film a lot. I think the I think I do own it on Blu-ray. I don't remember, but it's um, what was the name of the movie again? I don't remember. <laughs> it's uh, it's like a ghetto type movie and everything. Um. Read something I, I I don't remember, but yeah, Boys in the Hood. Probably one of the most um, amazing, inspiring film that just really will show you what drug abuse and what pretty much being obsessed with a lot of shit will lend will lend you. And yeah, Wrecking for a Dream. The, th this film itself should be taught in school or should be uh, an analyzed because it's such an amazing film. Um, Heather's. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yeah. Another Darren Aronofsky film. Dark visual uh, type film. I'm not going to play it. I don't want to get demoted. Not demoted, but I... I don't want to lose this video. I, I may, I, I would make you listen to the the theme, but with YouTube being picking and everything, so. Uh, okay. The Nutty Professor. I don't know if you ever released the sequel on Blu-ray. Uh, the Nutty Professor Two: The Clumps. Uh, I do own the original uh, Nutty Professor uh, film downstairs in my room so um yeah uh leon the professional just really love this artwork um this is why sometimes i, lo I love collecting steel books because of the art and everything and one that i one that i actually really really hate but i can understand with the star power and everything uh heavyweights originally it was not he was not there, but yeah. Um, uh, pretty much what a lot of you people, if a lot of you people out there, uh, don't know what the story is about. It's about a bunch of kids and all that at a fat cam, and that maniac, uh, Ben Stiller, is uh, is a uh, fit guru, and he just pretty much tortures the kids with all sorts of things and everything. So yeah, just really an awesome fat, uh, fat kid film. Uh, just like Angus. Um, since the first day I, I watched that film, I, I loved it from beginning to end. So um, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So the Shawshank Redemption. Why? Why this film? And it's an amazing film. 
I've never seen a film stay on IMDb's number one for so many years. And I don't I don't know when officially it came on um, number one greatest film of all time on IMDb. But uh, yeah, pretty awesome film, by the way. So it's been such a long time since, since I've seen it. I've never seen <laughs> I've never seen a sequel. But I, I heard it's pretty bad. But the Battle Royale, uh, pretty much, pretty much the the, the movie that, that inspired, um, what's the name of the movie? Fuck. Um, <laughs> try to think of something and doesn't want to come out. Uh, Hunger Games, yeah, Hunger Games. Terminator Anthology. So. This is what I love. You have the soundtrack. I don't think you have the entire sound. It's a sampler. A couple of, uh, a couple of, uh, songs and all that, but it's shit like that. that I, excuse me. Shit like this that I love because it includes goodies and all that extra goodies that is worth buying the set itself. So um, drive uh, the Baba Duke <clears throat> really I really love this film. I think this is a Nazi film. And it was written and directed by a woman, Jennifer Kent. And I just really, truly enjoyed this film. A lot of people didn't understand the film and didn't really like it. But yeah, it's it's pretty much about a mother trying to protect her son and everything. Um, yeah. It's been such a long time since I've seen the film, so I can't really say too much. The this one right here, I, I I loved it so much from beginning to end. North by Northwest, um, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, a call classic film. Um, And we're going to finish this with Fallen Out. So this is pretty much the ending of part one. Hope to see you in part two.